What's going on, everyone? It's your host, Zach Shooter Shoemaker, and I hope that everyone is having a very blessed day. Well, you're not going to want to miss today's episode, as you're going to be able to hear from two of San Diego's top recruits in both Shibuzo Agbo and Yasin Haram. But trust me, most importantly, they continue the Comptromatic series that is now episode 5, and the Texas Tech and Yale commits do not disappoint. But a few more episodes do remain in this series, so you're going to want to make sure to stay up to date on that. So make sure to go and follow me at Zach Shoemaker on both Twitter and Instagram to stay up to date. With that being said, I think we should hop right in. I'm excited to be able to welcome on one of the faces of San Diego basketball, a four-star player who ranks in at number 70 and who's recently committed to Texas Tech to the fifth episode of the Comptomatic Series in Chibuzo Agbo. How you doing today, bro? Good. How about you? Pretty good. Let's jump right in. You had a big decision. You decided to commit to Texas Tech. What went into that decision? The biggest thing for me was uh, development, you know, just seeing the way they work out the guys and the uh, path they have set for each of their players to work out and work on. Uh, I felt I'd fit well in the motion offense, and it just felt like some place I'd want to be. I felt like I'd fit in perfectly, so I didn't see any time to wait, and I committed as soon as I got home. Yeah, no doubt, and I think it's going to be great to see because last year, Coach Beer was able to put together a team that was an incredible roster without players that were highly recruited prospects out of high school. So now being able to add on guys like you that are top 100 players, top players in the class, and many of the guys that they're trying to go and, uh, and get, which they probably will, and to see what he's going to be able to do and accomplish with you guys will be truly special to watch. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. Mm-hmm. So are there any other guys you guys are kind of looking at, you know, if you guys are trying to recruit in your class? Uh, I know they're trying to recruit Namari Burnett. Um, I know the big man on YGC uh, 36 that we played in the Adidas championship game. He's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, that's all I know of. Oh, and uh, Micah Peavy. Okay. And how are the guys on the roster right now? Is there someone that you really look forward to being on play alongside? Um, All the guys were really cool when I went. Uh, and, you know, they're obviously all great players. So I think it's just going to be fun once I get there to, you know, uh, get to know them better and get on the court and start working with them. No doubt. And I also think that's a big accomplishment. You being able to come in, being a top 10 player in all time in terms of ranking-wise for their class is a huge accomplishment. So what's your thoughts on knowing that you're one of the best players I've ever been able to land? Um, I mean, it doesn't mean anything. Still got to go in there and work for every minute. Uh, got to come in and contribute uh, right away, work, get everything I want. So, I mean, it doesn't really mean too much. It is, uh, it's cool that you, you know, see that people recognize your hard work. Uh, when we get on the court, you know, you still gotta, still gotta work. Mm-hmm. I think that's a, that's a really key thing. Cause obviously I think as a player, you don't actually need to look at rankings in terms of what really can look at as a cool thing, you know, but at the end of the day, it's just, like you said, you just need to go prove yourself. Cause there's so many people that get too caught in rankings out of that. They're not being ranked fair enough or they're being not ranked at all or not, or they're ranked up too high and they get too in their head about it. And so, I mean, they don't stay humble and just know, People acknowledging that's great, but still going out there and performing is the biggest thing. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. No doubt. So let's talk about Compton Magic. Why did you decide to go over and decide to start playing with them? I mean, it was a little bit later than some of the people were that start there, but you still decided to move over then. So what went into that decision? Uh, it's a funny story, actually. I was playing on a AAU team. Uh, I really didn't play that much, very few minutes. And uh, a player I used to play with on Compton Magic, Paris Dawson, his dad talked to my dad. He said, you know, Compton Magic, you know, they want you to fit in well there. So uh, I'm not a guy who likes to move around teams. I try and make things work. Um, but, you know, I heard a lot of great things about Compton Magic, so I moved over there. And as soon as I, I started playing with them, I loved it. I mean, they had confidence in me. Uh, it was just a lot of fun to play with uh, those Compton Magic guys. So No doubt. I think Paris talked a little about that. I mean, just knowing that sometimes the fits aren't necessarily the best and it is good to move on. And obviously Compton is one of the most well-known AU programs out there. So being able to go and play for them, they obviously put you in a place to be successful and not only playing along great talent as well, but also for you to shine. And it was obviously benefited greatly as you really blew up in terms of rankings and notoriety in the last couple of years. Yeah, Compton Magic, they just put me on the stage. Uh, you know, playing for Compton Magic puts you on one of the biggest amateur basketball stages there is. So you just got to go out there and perform and, once you're on that team, it's all up to you how far you go. Mm-hmm. Cause I think a lot of people like maybe think obviously Nike is like most viewed as the highest best circuit all to play on. 
But I think in today's media and with scouts being able to travel all over, no matter where you are, I mean, as long as you have the right situation, the people that invest in you and you can play your game, it truly doesn't really matter what logo is on the side. It could be Under Armour, Nike, Adidas. Just as long as you're on that right place, it truly is the best place for you. Yeah, definitely, 100%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what were some of the guys you kind of connected well with or created great chemistry alongside with, with Compton? Um, I, I loved all those guys. It was really fun playing with all of them. Uh, but, you know, Yasin was my guy. Uh, <laughs> just great times with him. You know, we we're just always talking, just always together. So, I mean, we kind of got to travel the country together. So it was fun. It was just cool with him. Uh, that's my guy. I talked to him a lot. Um, but all of them are cool, you know. I can't wait to see them later and see what they're doing, how we're all doing, hoops and stuff like that. Uh, play against each other in college, hopefully league someday. So, Yeah, and that's the cool thing about basketball, especially when you're at a high level like you guys are. I mean, you're going to be playing with each other, at least in the same like leagues and all that for really the rest of your guys' career. I think everyone on that content team will be – everyone's playing D1, and then a lot of you guys have a chance to play NBA, if not everyone playing a professional at some level. So, I mean, seeing each other against each other is going to be an awesome thing from here on out. Yeah, mm-hmm. So what's it like seeing guys that are your friends either from Compton or other teams that go and come in and are able to live out the same dream as you? Um, I mean, it's just kind of inspiring, you know, uh, and it's just you're happy for them. You know, when you see uh, your teammates and your friends achieving their dreams and getting, you know, going to schools they want, it's just it's great. And you wish the best for them. Uh, it's just it's just great. You know, I mean, it's it's happiness all around. Good vibes for everybody. Mm hmm. Were there any talks between you and any of the other guys about possibly teaming up with each other in college? Um, when Dalen uh, committed, you know, he texted me a little bit about going to Arizona. But other than that, not too much. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think a lot of you guys all kind of, I mean, a lot of you guys actually commit a lot earlier than usual people do. I mean, a lot of guys are still waiting it out. I mean, obviously, Mo, Evan committed a long time ago. I mean, Dalen committed really early. I mean, a lot of you guys are committing early, which is just truly, like I said, when you find the right fit, you don't want to pass it up. Mm hmm yeah, that's, that's that's how I felt when I, I visited Texas Tech. You know, I'd seen other schools, and I, I kind of knew what I wanted. I liked other schools, but I knew what I wanted. And when I got to Texas, Texas Tech and saw what they were doing, you know, I just instantly knew that's where I wanted to be. So I really didn't waste any time uh, to keep visiting other schools or anything like that. Mm -hmm. What was the things kind of going in that you really wanted to see from a college? Um, Mainly? uh the culture was just right um you know coach beard and his values of what he values uh inside the team are kind of like my high school coach coach hops and uh it just kind of gave me a moment where i was like man this is like this is just like another step up and i can really get in there and succeed too so um just that just he values uh connection you know he always has the team doing stuff together um just stuff like that. Mm -hmm. No doubt. So let's talk a little more about high school then. What's it like? I mean, going into your senior year now, what is your expectations for the year? And do you have any personal goals that you really wanted to achieve this upcoming year? Um, One of my personal goals uh, is to just be one of the best leaders I can be for our team. You know, we can, we can go really far this year. We can be really good, but we'll only be as good as the leaders are. So me and uh, the coach's son, Luke, have to step up and lead the team. Um, and we want to win San Diego CIF and we want to win state. So just give it mm -hmm. everything we got this final year. Absolutely. I think that's a huge thing too, knowing that once again, you were able to commit early. I think a lot of guys talk about that and you go in not necessarily having to go in with the attitude of, I need to prove all these coaches what I can do, kind of going with that pressure. It's just, you know, where you're going and all you have to do is still play your game. That's the game that Texas Tech wants you to play. And other than that, you can just play basketball more about high school. Yeah. For sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So talk about some of the other guys on your team and how you're expecting them to step up or play alongside you. We have Mikhail. We have Alex Dennis. We have a lot of good guys. Our point guard. I think the main thing this year is everybody's gotten more comfortable and way more confident. You can just see it during practices and just when we're just playing four on four or anything like that. Everybody's just confident shooting the ball, attacking, just more comfortable in every situation. And defensively, I think we're going to be a lot scrappier this year. Uh, I think we're going to be very locked down, uh, a little bit harder to score on. So I think that's really going to help us. And uh, I think we're ready for a good year. Absolutely. 
So let's talk a little more about California basketball. I mean, obviously, a lot of big time players have shifted around this year and some have come into California. Talk about that and seeing really all these super teams start to form in the West Coast, but especially in California now. Oh, man, it's going to make it uh, a little bit harder on the goal for state, but um, never duck any competition. You know, I'm, I want to play the best teams. We're going to play uh, Sierra Canyon uh, late November, and I'm excited for that. You know, hopefully we can get a W. Um, but, you know, these super teams, uh, I just love competition. The best team, I'm always excited to play. You know, that's just me. Mm-hmm. I think any player, when you're at a high level, can really, it's not necessarily even an upset, just a lot of guys, talent can just win, and that's something going in against these teams. I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, for them, it might be the best situation, but like you said, staying in one place and kind of creating that chemistry, and that can obviously override and sometimes defeat a super team, even though they might have tons of top five top 10 players it's easy to win against that if you can play as a team and that chemistry comes in big time yeah I mean I haven't switched or anything like that it's just all love you know I love coach hop I love my teammates like my brother so it's just playing on the floor with them is is one of my favorite things ever so Mm -hmm. no doubt and so a couple things I would like to wrap up kind of talking about is one just who you say in your life has been your biggest role model um Besides my parents, I would definitely say uh, Coach Hopped. Um, outside of basketball, he is just one of the best men I've ever met. Uh, he always is just trying to present himself in the best way. He's always dropping knowledge on us, trying to teach us how to be better young men every day. And um, he's just he's just a good guy, always trying to do better for everybody else. So, I mean, he's definitely been one of my uh, – biggest role models he's definitely shaped who I am as a young man today um so I thank him for that no doubt I think whenever I mean obviously God put so many great people in your life throughout the course of it I mean when you're able to find someone else that you're obviously invested has to invest in you kind of for the next three four years of high school career or whatnot it's a huge thing to be able to have someone you can truly trust and rely on that can help guide you through it because everyone knows I mean being an athlete especially is not an easy path going all the way up to the pros I mean it's a lot of other temptations and stuff that can get in your way. So, I mean, being able to have a guy, aside from your parents, is just a huge thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, just every day he was just – he's more than a coach to me. He just – that's the guy I joke with. You know, I see him every day, all smiles. Uh, he gives, he tells me the things I need, I need to know. Um, you know, if I do something wrong, you know, he's going to let me know. He's always honest with me. And so uh, Coach Hop is like – He's, he's a big role model to me. I'm just, I was just grateful to have him in my life these past couple of years. Absolutely. And then it's also talking about more about coaches. What was some of the Compton Magic guys that helped also influence you and help guide you with Compton? Oh, man, Coach DG, Coach Mitch, uh, all of them, you know, Coach Ray, they all uh, just, when I step on the court, you know, sometimes if I had a bad game before, sometimes, honestly, I didn't have confidence in myself, and they reinstill that confidence in me. You know, telling me to shoot the ball, let it go, drive. Um, and just when when you have coaches that believe in you and know the sky's the limit, and they put me on a big platform, uh, gave me all the confidence I needed, let me play, I had them to thank for that. Absolutely. And that's one of the cool things about Compton, that they do have so many coaches and so many people that are still invest in guys, not only while you're there, but throughout the rest of your career. I mean, there's a lot of things you see with the guys like Jordan Bell and um, Jalen Hands, a lot of former NBA players is with Compton that now come back and they still invest in you guys. I mean, was there any guys that you kind of stood out to you that might have come back that were former college or pro players from Compton that kind of influenced you as well? Um, I mean, just seeing all the Compton Magic guys uh, the year before me, they were, uh, you know, the the legendary team, you know what I mean? They went, I don't know the exact record, but they won a lot of games, you know, they uh, undisputed. So, I mean, just seeing that was pretty amazing and kind of inspired me when I was on 16s. Mm-hmm, absolutely. And finally, I'd like to wrap up. I mean, I'm a strong believer in God, and a faith is a huge thing in my life. But how would you say God is a religion that has impacted your life to this point? Um, at times, uh, I didn't know where basketball was going to take me or, you know, if I was going to be the player I wanted to be. But I just have faith in God and faith that hopefully I can inspire other people with this. You know, it is bigger than basketball. And I believe God has a plan with me with basketball and outside of basketball and what I'll do with it. uh, People I can impact with it. 
I think that's a huge thing to have, especially once again as an athlete. I think so many people that a lot of people obviously, if you make it to the league to the highest point, you do have the money, you can have fame and all, but a lot of people still in the world don't necessarily know that and they don't really care about sports. But guys that you see, some of these professional players, like of course LeBron Hanks is the prime example of that, that go out and build schools, go out and impact the public in a huge way and just truly give back is a huge thing because that's something that gets recognized across the world and truly leaves an impact and you truly can have always be remembered and help other people grow up that may not have the gifts in terms of basketball or the fame that God's gifted you or other people with. Yeah, exactly. And lately just seeing how, you know, some younger kids look up to me, I realize that I have eyes on me now and kids look up to me and see the way I act. So I realize I have to act, you know, the way I want them you know, to know that that actually an athlete who has people looking at them should act, you know, uh, humble and just knowing that God blessed you with these talents. You have to use that to impact other people's lives in a better way. No doubt. I mean, that's definitely a huge thing. So be able to keep doing that and uh, definitely love seeing that. And best of luck this upcoming senior year. And obviously at Texas Tech and from there on out, bro. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, no problem. Talk to you later. God bless. All right. Have a good one. You too. Coming up next, you're not going to want to miss hearing from Yusin Haram as he comes on to discuss many topics bearing from his commit to Yale, his high school upcoming season, obviously playing for Comfort Magic, and so much more that you're not going to want to miss hearing from. So stay right there, and I wouldn't want to go anywhere. And Yusin Haram's interview comes up right after this. I'm blessed to be able to welcome on one of the biggest names from San Diego. He's one of the stars on Comfort Magic, and he's a star and the leader of Foothills Christian. He's recently come to Yale, and that's guard Yassin Haram. What's going on today, bro? I'm doing great, bro. How are you doing? Pretty good. So let's jump right and talk about your commitment. Obviously, it's a huge decision. You decided to go with Yale. What went into that decision? Um, I think, first and foremost, what went into that decision was um, me really just changing my life, as in um, just making a step. I mean, I come from a single mom, seven kids, and um, I'm a first generation to go to college, so uh, obviously I've reached the, the best college I could go to for academics, and um, they've been really good in basketball the last recent years, um, especially making the turn- tournament two out of three years and being conference champions. It just gives me a great shot of uh, fulfilling both of my dreams, which is uh, being, like, you know going as far as I can with my college education and playing basketball at the, the highest level and playing such great teams. No doubt. I think that's a huge thing for multiple reasons. Obviously, the educational part. I mean, like you said, it's one of the most prestigious colleges in all the world. I mean, them, Harvard, and whatnot. So, I mean, even if God doesn't have basketball in your path past college, I mean, the world and the doors open for endless opportunities in terms of outside of basketball and off the court. Yeah, and that's for sure something I, you know, I considered. But obviously, me going there and my direction and my focus was basketball, you know, and mm-hmm. so. I think, uh, you know, for sure, I know Coach Jones has believed in me f- since day one, believed in my story, and um, they've just recruited me so tough and um, on me all the time, and uh, they really feel like I can come and make an immediate impact into, you know, his college program, which says a lot to, um, you know, complement my game and uh, myself as a, you know, human being, and my character. So, I mean, I'm just very thankful for them believing in me and really giving me a shot. No doubt. That's a huge thing. Making sure you go to a program that – has a coach that's not just wanting you, but truly invests in you and is constantly keeping up and wanting to make sure you are in his program and will do whatever it takes is a huge thing because you know when it comes time to lace up and play and step on the college court, you know it's going to be a great thing that he's going to trust in you and you're going to be able to do what you want to be able to do. Yes, for sure. Mm-hmm. And so what kind of – were there any other colleges that you were kind of considering or were, was Yale just by, by far your favorite? Um, there was for sure other colleges that – um you know, we're jumping in and uh, we had, to, you know, there's some that were going to come in too. And, you know, once I told them that, you know, I didn't really think I'm gonna make a decision, you know, very soon they um, try to, you know, just go full fledged with me and uh, just try to get the head coach at all that, you know, business. And I was thankful for all that, but I just, uh, me being around my high school coach, coach Brad leaf, who's, you know, his son is Troy leaf and TJ leaf. Who's on the Pacers. I actually live with him and, you know, I've lived with him since my sophomore year, and he's kind of guided me and molded me into a player that, you know, that can play college basketball because he's always told me only 1% of people in the country play college basketball. So you have to be really good and 
work really hard to get this. And if this is something you want to do, I'm going to push you to that point. And, you know, he really helped me fulfill what I want to do. And I know I have so much more that I want to get done. And that just him preparing me for that, I just felt like it was the best option. No doubt. And I think like you've obviously progressed a lot throughout your college career or high school career and getting ready for the next step. I mean, I think you're definitely a point guard that a guard that can definitely help lead a team into the next era of Yale basketball. And obviously, like you said, there are many other options. And I think playing that the whole season, you could have attracted many more schools. But just make, once again, just knowing that you had a school that's invested in you from the beginning, is a school that once again, you know you can go into and be the player that you want to be. I agree. I totally agree. That's just it. That's all I wanted was someone to believe in me. And, you know, just give me a chance right away. That was another thing is just, you know, being able to come in and, you know, get some minutes as a freshman and, you know, maybe taking, uh, you know, being able to be a starting PG or, you know, just work my way. I just wanted to work hard and make sure I, you know, try to get get that spot, that ultimate spot that I want. And I just feel like it's a big chance of, you know, especially with how many seniors they're going to have and and what they believe in me. Mm hmm. Absolutely. So have there been anyone else you're kind of contacting or reaching out to try to recruit to bring along with your class? Um, not really. I mean, we just uh, we just got a guy that is he's from Ghana. He lives. I, I forget where he's at, but uh, where he lives at. But he's six nine. And um, he he had like West Virginia. He had like big high major schools and he just chose Yale like last week. And he, he had at least 10 high majors and uh, he chose Yale last week and he's a great player and I'm looking forward to, you know, picking roles with him and being able to build with him and also as well as um, uh, there's uh, this one uh, guy they just got from East Catholic, I think in New Jersey, who's really good and I'm just looking forward to meeting these guys and just growing closer and building that relationship and, and putting it onto the basketball court. No doubt. So how are some of the guys on the roster right now? Is there anyone that you've talked to or that you think you're going to be able to play great alongside that you're looking forward to playing with? Um, I, yeah, so I went to – I'm actually going for my official visit this week on Thursday with my mom okay. and my brother. So, um, yeah, I'm going Thursday to see the guys again. But um, there's a San Diego native on that school. His name's Eric Monroe. He's going to be a senior. He uh, Just just getting knowledge from all of them. And then I think them just, you know, trying to help me – just understand how hard it is, you know, once you get in, it's not as easy. And I think I'm very fortunate for everyone that's around me in my circle to, you know, push me and tell me how hard it is. That makes it easier for me, mm -hmm. you know, and just, just being ready. And, um, I mean, they, they all are great players and, you know, they're telling me, you know, just work hard and just stay focused and, you know, get your, get your stuff done. And, you know, you have a chance. No doubt. And just being a little about that relationship, like with San Diego players, I mean, Obviously, you got some connections there, but talk about how it kind of is in California, because a lot of states obviously have just just one kind of state, and that's kind of what they represent. But California has kind of broken down into a lot of different areas in terms of how you guys are classified yeah. coming out of college. So talk about that and what it's like being part of the San Diego group and some of the other guys that really obviously stand out. I think it's very special being uh, around the San Diego group because uh, as the city, it's you know it's only about uh, it's only a couple kids that are going to play that play D1 every year and. Um, I'm very fortunate to be, you know, named alongside those those other players. And I think this year is only – I think it's like playing Division One is about, only like about four of us or something like that. But, you know, everyone – you know, kudos to everyone else that's going to play college basketball at some level. It's a big accomplishment. But um, it's very special, and I'm very blessed to be able to, you know, be named alongside those other players and be uh, – represent, you know, represent San Diego – and, you know, where we come from, because, you know, it's kind of like our, we have our own part. It's not San Diego's not really broken up. Like, you know, how you kind of have L.A. And then it's like, you know, mm -hmm. it's it's like the um, the inland area. Then, you know, everywhere like that. I mean, that's not really L.A., but I kind of just count that all as one. And um, we're very lucky to just have, you know, San Diego as established. So you're from San Diego. It's not your you're from, you know, East mm -hmm. LA or Hollywood or you know what I mean and so it's, mm -hmm. it's really special to me and um, I'm, I'm grateful for it absolutely and that's another thing that it's so crazy because this upcoming high school season obviously is going to be an interesting one because so much talent has obviously switched around schools and even come into California guys like Dior and whatnot but talk about that and what you're really looking forward to this upcoming season having so much talent in California as a whole I'm definitely looking forward to it. You know, there's so much talent in uh, San Diego and um, in L.A. and just all of California in general. And I'm looking forward to all the challenges. And I want I want every team that wants to play us and any team that's going to play us just know 
that, you know, we're coming not to play no games. I'm not coming to play games. We're looking to win no matter how we have to do it. We're going to win. And, and I, I, it's just, it's, it's a great, it's a great era for, you know, California basketball right now with as, as much talent as we have and put players going to play division one basketball. Absolutely. So are there any games that really stand out to you that you're looking forward to this upcoming season that you know about? Um, I, I know for sure I'm looking forward to the Torrey Pines Classic. It's that's it's unbelievable. I think I was just telling my coach uh, the other day that, that as a, that's what I live for. It's like the Torrey Pines tournament is like what you live for. It's just so fun. It's around Christmas time, and you know everyone, the whole city comes. They pack it out with thousands of people and just in the gym, and it's just it just feels like a real like just like a like a New York type of vibe. Like you know everyone just come out watch the the, the basketball and you mm-hmm. know just have a good time and. You know, it's so innocent that, you know, it's just you just have such a great time, build memories off that and win. Mm hmm. I think that's one of the cool things about like those big high school tournaments, because it kind of takes apart the good parts about AAU and high school basketball, where you're still on the team kind of structure that high school basketball brings. But then it brings in that kind of that AAU fans and yeah, travel like, yeah. away and just tournaments. It's a great yeah. thing where you can go watch basketball, like you said, all day for two, three, four days. And that's just an awesome thing. Yeah, for sure. And I'm looking forward. Uh, they do it before they do the open like the open uh, or it's the national division for Torrey Pines. They uh, have a San Diego classic game like the day before them all. And uh, so the whole San Diego just comes out and watches it. Just the San Diego teams, the top San Diego, I think top six San Diego teams. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a blast to see how um, that all uh, rolls out. Absolutely. And then talking a little more about the San Diego basketball, obviously you're going to be moving up after this year into college and a few other guys. But talk about the younger guys coming up and who's someone that really stands out to you and what's some advice you give to them for the guys take, getting ready to take over your guys kind of role and grow into being the faces of San Diego basketball. Well, yeah, for sure. I know there's a, you know, there's a couple young guys, like uh, very young, you know, obviously Mikey, that's who, you know, is a freshman. And um, there's also, all t- you know, all types of young guys that are building up and, uh, you know, you know, just establishing their name obviously Mikey you know we know who he is and mm-hmm. and he's you know he's a really great young young player and young man and he's you know he's he's like my little brother we talk all the time almost every a couple of days you know we'll talk he's such a cool just down to earth humble kid and um I think that's really what's going to um separate him from everyone is just you know as much uh, notoriety he gets and and all that um he very is just humble and you know he stays down uh with you know the people that he's been that's been there with him and or that grew up with him and um for sure you know him and i just you know i would tell him just you know stay humble stay patient and um just you know keep working hard and keep your head down uh, listen to your parents the right people around you in your circle and and you'll be just fine um as well as you know there's aaron bergen who's really good who goes to san diego um san diego uh high school in downtown uh, he's very, you know, I think he is very good. He's going to be really good, too. He's a junior this year. Same with him. Just, you know, the colleges will come. What You're good. You know, if you're good enough, they will come. If not, then they won't come. And I, that's how I learned, you know. So um, that's how Coach Brad taught me is, you know, if you're good, they'll come. If not, you know, you got to keep working hard and, and just um, seeing where it takes you. As well as um, a couple guys on my team, Darian Carter Hollinger, who's who's going to be really good, I think, is going to be our X factor this year on my Foothills Christian team. He um, his ceiling's like amazing and, uh, he keeps getting better and better and just willing, he's willing to listen and, uh, just, uh, take in from, you know, everyone around him and us older guys. And he's been through the fire with us. So he's just a little younger. So he just, you know, he's seen it from different bird's eye view. So I just him and, um, there's a couple guys at cathedral that, you know, I think, I think just stay patient, you know, uh, stay humble, just enjoy the process. It goes by fast and just, um, uh, just really, you really listen to those who are really close around you, not any outsiders. Mm-hmm. That's definitely a key thing. And let's jump in and talk about your upcoming high school season. Talk about like originally though, why did you decide to go and attend Foothills Christian? Um, it was my, I went my freshman year. I went to a school called Point Loma High School, and um, my mom had lived in Point Loma, so um, I, I like coming up from eighth grade. I was supposed to actually go to Sierra Canyon with uh, me and my best friend Keegan and Marcus Bagley. All three of us were going to go. We went there, checked out the school, everything. And we were, uh, you know, working out in LA all the time and with each other. And um, then that didn't work out. We, we all parted ways. And um, I went to a point, I just went back to San Diego with my mom. Just was like, all right, I'm going to have a great freshman year. And then just, uh, you know, 
to see where it takes me, to see where it takes me. Maybe I stay here. Or, you know, I knew I wanted to play the highest level of high school basketball. And then so um, uh, I had to try to get in. I try to, you know, just see a couple of friends at Foothills and, you know, see if I, how I can get in. And actually, you know, you know, Coach Brad, um, he seen me play and I, he knew, you know, who I was. And as well as I was, you know, I think I, I was top 20, 20 kid in San Diego for NPG too. So, you know, I already had a little bit of notoriety with that and um, just being a good leader. And then after that, just, just was, I went, my, went to Foyles my sophomore year. And then ever since then, it's just been a story. No doubt. So talk about some of the expectations you have for this upcoming year and what you're really looking forward to with playing alongside your team. I think my expectation is just um, me as the leader, just, you know, make sure I stay positive and lead uh, the right way. And, you know, I know it's easy when, uh, to, when things are going wrong to just put your head down and, you know, pout about it or, or, you know, whatever the nonsense is. And instead just, you know, taking that next step and leading our guys and pushing through it and uh, really setting our goals and expectations of, you know, winning league and then winning open division CIF in San Diego, then going on to state and winning more. And so that's my goal. I've lost two years in a row in the open division CIF championship. And um, you don't know how bad I want it this year. So Mm -hmm. I'm getting it. Absolutely. And I think it is going to be fun to like, once again, I mean, with it being so much talent to be able to come together and be that leader is a huge thing. Cause obviously, like you said, I mean, it is something that you could just go put your head down and kind of, I mean, you know, you're going to college and whatnot, but also you could take it the other way of saying, Hey, now I've commit. I know I'm going to Yale. There's nothing I really have to worry about in terms of college. Just, just keep doing what Yale wants, but then you can truly work on your skill and know what's some things you can get better to prepare you for. And obviously leadership's a key thing, especially for a guard. So be able to excel at that and lead your team will be huge and benefit you down the line. I agree. I agree. Totally agree with that. That's, mm-hmm. that's, that's basically, that's basically it. And just, you know, listen to coach and um, just, and just really taking that next step to, you know, not just my senior year, but what, you know, my expectations is, you know, when we always, me and coach always, not a year ahead, but we always, he always wants to, okay, how can you be ready to play college basketball right away? If you're put in the position, how can I get you ready to play right away? So I'm going to hold you, you know, accountable now. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that's what I'm so thankful for is, you know, him, uh, you know, thinking the bigger picture. No doubt. And another, obviously, I think a lot of coaches also impacted you with playing with Compton Magic. So let's talk a little about that and what it's been like with your time playing with the Magic. Uh, my time playing with the Magic, you know, it's very easy for me to say. Just, you know, just it was a great experience. It was so fun, you know, playing along such talented guys on, on our 17U team, man. Like, before Johnny went and reclassed up to Kentucky, we were we were the best. No one was going to beat us. Mm-hmm. And then before Evan got hurt, nobody was going to – no one's going to beat us. So imagine if we had Johnny and Evan wasn't hurt all summer. And, you know, we there was plenty of tournaments that we didn't have all of our guys. People were sick, you know, it was – it was a tough summer, but, you know, we still ended up only losing, I think, four or five games. And I think three of those games were buzzer beaters and and like four of them were out Evan Mobley. So um, it was just like, I mean, it was an unbelievable experience to play along, you know, future NBA guys and uh, all of us to be just a collective one to, you know, ha- drop our egos at the door and just play within each other and, you know, play team ball, which we did great. No doubt. I think that's the thing that stands out most about Compton is that you guys are so so united as like one group, and it's so evident. I mean, everyone has a key role. Obviously, Dalen's one of the guys that just has the energy nonstop going and is a talker guy. But everyone, like obviously, you play a role coming off the bench or starting whatever you need to do, and you just lead the team that way. I mean, obviously, Evan, we know what he does when he's healthy. I mean, Jalen can be the energy guy. He can lock up. I mean, yeah. DJ, everyone can. Everyone plays a great part, and that's why you guys are pretty much unstoppable because everyone is D1 talent, if not – a lot of you guys are probably going to be able to play basketball at some level past college, which is a huge thing. And also you just have the chemistry once again, not like some of these guys that go out all about themselves. Yeah, for sure. I think the biggest thing is, you know, I think, like I said, just our, dropping our egos. And that's the number one thing. Coach Spoon, before you even work out, he doesn't care if you're the number one player in the country. I mean, he doesn't care if you have a Kentucky offer, you have a Yale offer, anything. He's like, you know, drop that ego at the door. He says, <laughs> We, you know, we're not dealing with that. And then I think that's where it just, it's where the coaches set the tone and we were obviously ready to respect them. And then, you know, it's easy for us. We're like, we just want to play ball. So we dropped our, we, we all just, are, it's just a different, it's just different, man. Like, I don't know how to describe it. Compton, Matt, it's just different. Like nobody is worried about the wrong stuff. And like, it's just different. It's like, it feel, it feel, it's so easy to just come in and so comfortable because it's like, 
everyone just you know likes each other and like we don't and it's like we haven't seen each other in like a you know a whole like eight months or whatever and then we see each other we link up and then it's like oh it's like back to normal it's, like, it's just crazy bro i'm telling you i've been on other au teams and compton magic there's nothing like a brotherhood and dropping your egos and just liking each other and playing so um unselfish with each other it's it's ridiculous mm -hmm. that's what Jalen and clark was talking about he just talked about how it's everyone is one group once again that everyone like you said you guys hang out i mean everyone kind of plays the role too obviously evan's one of the more quiet guys but everyone just has fun and can get along well and at the same time like he said no matter what you really are they'll send you home mid-term if you have to there's really nothing that there's going to hold them back they just want even if you're top players they're held to expectation from the number one player to the bottom player yeah for sure bro that's exactly mm -hmm. it so were there any other coaches besides coach spoon that also had a big impact on you and if so who were they and what did they kind of do for you um, I think every coach played a different role in my, you know, in my experience there. Um, obviously coach Ato, you know, he's the Mecca of it all, you know, the top of it all. He just, you know, he said, he said, he's such a, like, you know, I'll give you, I'll give my heart to you. That's how he's that. He's that type of guy. Like I'll take my shirt off to give to you before, and I'll, and I'll walk out with no shirt. You know, he's that type of guy. And it's just like to have the leader of our program like that is, you know, is very special. And I think that's what separates us from a lot of different programs, as well as Coach Spoon, Coach J. Will, Justin Williams. I mean, he's just such a positive all the time, no matter what you're losing, anything, just smiling, happy, like knows how to get you through that next step. Um, coach uh, DG, you know, he's just, you know, he was just very like, I mean, all the coaches, I, I loved them all. It was not one that I was like, nah, like, uh, I don't mess with you. No, all of them all played an impact and you know, in my success and our success. And um, I'm thankful for all of them. Absolutely. And so was there anyone on the team that you really created a tight bond with or really a closer bond than anyone else with or? Um, I think, uh, you know, obviously Chibuzo, you know, we were, we were roommates in every room and uh, San Diego boys. And I, I, I told Chibuzo, like, no lie. Like, I'm not just saying this because I'm on camera right now is that we, we got so, we built a real bro relationship through mm -hmm. these Compton Magic tournaments, we, like by, you know, sleeping in, you know, in the, our hotel rooms, uh, us, you know, just hanging out on, you know, uh, you know, in the hotel and, and um, us having the same room together and just, you know, we just went through all different stuff. You know, he, he got injured and sprained his ankle and I was there for him, you know, helped him with the ice. And if I needed ice for ice back, he got it for me, just little things like that. And I just created such a bigger bond that now, like we talk to each other every day. He calls me, you know, we're bestest of friends. Like I, he's like my, I feel like he's like my brother. And um, it, that, like, that's a special thing I think about AU that I took out from it is that it's bigger than basketball. We created relationships that we actually like each other as people and that, you know, that we can, okay, you know, see, oh, you know, when we're 30, 40 years old that I can see him, oh, he's still my friend. You know, mm -hmm. he's coming over to see my family. Like, you know, I see, like, that's what I see. And, um Shabuzo, he's just a special guy, just a special young man that I, that just really drew me to him and uh, to be closer and to build a nice friendship with. Absolutely. And talk a little more about, obviously, your meet with Shibuzo for a long time, at least four years through college and then probably throughout professionals. And then talk about that and being able to be with him for that long and also just having those guys with Compton, just friends you've created from camps and playing with high school that you're going to be able to see live up the same dream as you and being able to play with them through high school and then throughout the professional leagues. I mean, it's so awesome. I mean, I, I, it's like I get goosebumps with how, like, how happy I am for me to see these guys to go to college. Like every time Johnny posts something about Kentucky, I'm like, I'm just so happy for him. Like it just, I'm like, wow, bro. Like, you really are, are at Kentucky within, you know, three months. You just all, you know, you're at Kentucky, boom. Mm -hmm. And now you're, you know, now you're gonna be one of the best freshmen in the country. And they think, and Coach Calipari thinks, you know, you can go to the NBA right away. So it's like, it's like, it's crazy. It's like I'm so happy for these guys and. To see their success, you know, really just like it lightens me, it just really lightens me and gives me this fire that, man, I'm so happy that I'm around these people because I know what they're like as people. Mm -hmm. and for you drop the basketball stuff, I know what they're like as people. And um, to see just see these guys, you know, go on and, you know, play four years, two years, one year, three years. I mean, it doesn't matter. I think I think all of us will be successful at, you know, what we do end up doing. And um, it just it just makes it really just fills my heart to see, you know, these guys. Um, being able to play college basketball. Absolutely. And that one, one thing that really stood out to me there is something that, unfortunately, not every fan that likes high school, college, or pro basketball can see, but 
just the character. I mean, a lot of people just obviously turn on the channel and watch basketball and watch them play, and they yeah, judge them and play that. as a player. But everyone's got such unique personalities. And, of course, are there some guys that are not good people? Sure, but the majority, if not – say about 80-plus percent of the guys, if not more, are truly great yeah. people, and they all have such great stories that it's just awesome to hear and just know them for who they are. That's, that's why I think it was so awesome when LeBron came out with the more than an athlete thing because it's like – you know, you're so solidified as an athlete or a basketball player that that people don't understand like how good your heart is and how you know how much impact you have on you know your friend's life and all that stuff. And um, that's like it's for sure because you know we live it, so we know it's like man, it's bigger than basketball. It's just it's not just all about bouncing the ball. It's like all this other stuff that factors in that makes you you know that better basketball player as well. Absolutely, and kind of bouncing off that, is there anything in your life that you really want to kind of be like known for an impact that you really are looking to, forward to possibly impacting down the, down the rest of your life? Um, uh, impact. I think, you know, what I want to just make sure I stamp is that anything is possible. And, you know, I've been, I was raised with a single mom, seven kids living in a one bedroom apartment and having no hope, like quote unquote, there's no hope. And I always had hope. I, I was waking up at 6 a.m. to go to the gym, 5 a.m., walking my butt to the gym, um, taking the the Amtrak for a whole year and a half to my tournaments to L.A. Nobody took me. I took myself to my tournaments to L.A. to meet up with my team there. And um, I think it's all the sacrifice that I did, uh, you know, put me in the best position now. And um, just having a great – just two great role models in my life, um, my brother-in-law, Pablo Kong, and uh, my, my, my basketball coach, Brad Leaf, and as well as my other brother-in-law, um, Jamar Ransom, who, you know, they all just – you know, just, just showed me, you know, like what it is to be a true young man and to fulfill what you want. And No doubt. That's awesome. And finally, I would like to wrap up just talking about faith and obviously that's a key thing in my life. So just talk about that and how God's helped get you to the point you're at today. Uh, you know, obviously faith is, you know, a huge, huge you know, number one thing. And uh, me just, you know, keeping God first. And uh, even though, you know, sometimes you have life stuff that happens and you like, God, why does that happen? Um, I think that, you know, you still need to, you know, remain, just, uh, you know, still believe that everything happens for a reason. And um, big faith is huge in my house with my mom and my brothers and sisters and us, you know, believing God, you know, does everything for a reason. And, you know, he placed certain people in your life for a reason and and everything along that way. And um, I think it's the number one thing. And without him, it, you're nothing. So, um, yeah, absolutely. I think that's so awesome because. Like you said, I mean, there's nothing else that you really – there's nothing else can, that can really be number one because you know that for the best and the worst times, there's one person that's able to go and help guide you through this path and get you to the thing, and you can always rely on him no matter what stage you're in. I agree, brother. Mm-hmm. Well, it's definitely been amazing having you on today, my guy. Best luck this upcoming season. I can't wait to see what you do, obviously, throughout college and then from there on out. Best of luck. Thank you, brother. All right, no problem. God bless. God bless. Go Bulldogs. Go Bulldogs.